today I would like to talk about our approach in um, multiplex biomarker visual visualization. And I want to talk about the importance of multiplex biomarker analysis. Most of us are familiar with traditional immunofluorescence to detect proteins of interest in a variety of tissue types. With immunofluorescence, you may obtain images that are similar to the image presented here on the screen. But I am asking, what can we take away from this image? What do we learn? Yes, there are more cells um, with this color in this area, which could be the tumor, but there are different patterns of cells um, in this area down here, which looks like the stroma. But are we missing something here? And if so, what are we missing here? Imagine you could reveal a whole new layer of information um, from your immunofluorescence experiments that not only lets you study which cell types are present in the tissue that you investigate, but also where are these cells in relation to each other and how likely are they to interact with each other. Um, we want to see a whole new layer of information. This is where spatial biology comes in. Akoya Biosciences approach allows us to detect more markers on a single tissue than traditional immunofluorescence, while at the same time always maintaining a single cell resolution and labeling of cells within the spatial context. I would like to briefly address the importance of multispectral imaging today and multiplex immunofluorescence. And then I will introduce our high throughput phenoptics approach that is based on multispectral immunofluorescence paired with a powerful machine learning analysis. Lastly, I will introduce our novel Codex platform that allows hyplex biomarker interrogation and discovery with a powerful suite of spatial analysis tools. Many of you, um, John has just mentioned approximately 90% of you have already used our technology before. So I want to just briefly address the importance of multispectral imaging again in immuno-oncology, but also in other disciplines. Because multiplex imaging and spatial analysis are part of our DNA at Akoya. Why multiplexing? Well, single marker-based discovery and patient stratification, for example, are very promising, but they lack accuracy and predictive value. I would like to start with this example of PDL1 immunohistochemistry being used to predict the patient response to immunotherapy. In this specific case, researchers looked after treatment um, at tissues and at response rates of patients to pembrolizumab treatment. Only 41% of predicted responders based on PDL1 immunohistochemistry alone actually ended up responding to the therapy, while more than half of the predicted responders did not. Conversely, still 13% of predicted non-responders still responded. This shows us that um, with looking at one marker, one biomarker by itself, we cannot always make a valid prediction of um, treatment response, for example. Um, this really shows there's a disconnect between monoplex immunohistochemistry and predicted outcome. And evidently, there is still room for improvement. If we think about the cellular microenvironment of a tumor and how it is composed, we realize that we are not only looking at one cell type or one cellular marker. This shows that we need to address more than we can achieve with simple immunohistochemistry to best really stratify our patient groups and make most valid conclusions in our studies. I specifically talk about the cellular microenvironment and not simply the tumor microenvironment because I believe it holds true for many tissues everywhere where we study disease. Multiple cell types interact with each other, for example, in cardiovascular disease, in neuroscience, in diabetes, metabolic disease, many more fields. But now let's return back to the microenvironment. Here we see malignant cells, but they do not exist in isolation. In the case of a tumor, we find cancer-associated fibroblasts, cells that make up the vasculature, T cells and B cells that travel by or cross the endothelium and infiltrate the tumor, 
we see natural killer cells, dendritic cells, and macrophages that embed themselves within the microenvironment. And lastly, we see seemingly unrelated cells such as red blood cells, the odd adipocytes, and mesenchymal stem cells. This is an extremely simplified view of the microenvironment, but already in this image we can observe 13 distinct cellular phenotypes. And I think this is a powerful explanation why looking at only one or two biomarkers in isolation very often does not deliver an accurate result and it offers predictive, limited predictive value. So posing the same question that I posed a few questions um, a few slides before, why MSI? Why multispectral imaging? Well, multiplex immunofluorescence and multispectral imaging allow for better patient stratification and comprehensive, highly meaningful data interpretation. To enter precision medicine and true spatial multiplexing, novel techniques are required. So commonly used techniques usually require the researchers to make compromises that are not always ideal. For example, standard immunohistochemistry and immunofluorescence allow the detection of the cells in situ in their spatial context, but the number of markers is limited by spectral overlap of available fluorophores and the number of different antibody host species. In contrast, flow cytometry, especially in clinical settings, allows co-detection of up to 20 colors per cell, but it requires extensive calibration and compensation to um, achieve such a high plex performance. In addition to be accessible for flow cytometry, cells need to be released from the matrix and from the spatial environment, and the context is entirely lost. And recent genomics and proteomics methods um, do allow for a high degree of multiplexing, but they still often struggle with producing a true single cell resolution or spatial context, and they're often highly complex or the processes involved are opaque. And on top of it, um, a lot of genomics and proteomics methods are still prohibitively expensive. We at Akoya seek to overcome the limitations of ordinary immunofluorescence and immunohistochemistry methods, which, which have been tried over decades, and we offer a true multiplexing, true single cell resolution platform. We see ourselves right in the center of a comprehensive multiplex imaging continuum. Uh, our Codex platform offers high multiplexing and our Phenoptics platform allows high throughput imaging and analysis of up to eight different markers per tissue. Firstly, I would like to talk about our phenoptics approach and how we can visualize eight markers on one single tissue section. Multiplex immunofluorescence requires us to break the boundaries of traditional immunofluorescence. Using narrow bandpass filters, we are able to somewhat isolate each fluorous emission and record a signal. This works relatively well for a small panel with a low degree of multiplexing, like a threeplex panel. Or you might even get away with five fluorophores. But if we try to look at nine floors, um, for example, our eightplex panels use eight antibodies plus DAPI as a counter stain, it gets quite messy. It becomes too impossible to use only narrowband filters to isolate each signal from one specific fluorophore as the excitation and emission spectra greatly overlap. We effectively lose any distinction in these um, wavelengths here. Using a combination of bandpass filters, one cannot accurately assign fluorescence to a distinct marker. For example, what we see in our DAPI channel is actually a composite of DAPI plus the CD8 channel plus some autofluorescence. The same happens with all of our other channels, which would end up as a composite of neighboring fluorophores. The phenoptics approach circumvents these issues by using a combination of ordinary narrowband and long pass filters and a liquid crystal tunable filter to record a spectrum for each pixel of a slide. Since each fluorophore has a distinct spectral signature, we are able to unmix the spectra and accurately assign the signal to the correct marker present on the slide. For example, after unmixing, all the signal um, stored in the DAPI channel actually comes from DAPI, and all the signal stored in the CD8 channel actually comes from CD8. 
And this is true for all the markers on our panel. Now we can really trust that a yellow signal really stems from CD68, whereas a purple signal um, really comes from CD8 and um, a red signal really is our PD1 stain. Autofluorescence also has a very distinct spectral signature and can be unmixed out of the image. The result is that with our approach, we are able to visualize up to nine colors on one slide. Because of autofluorescence removal and unmixing, images become clear and false positives are avoided by accurately unmixing overlapping spectra. Multiplex immunofluorescence allows us to interrogate biomarkers and cells within their spatial context. By phenotyping cells, we are able to calculate their nearest neighbors and in this specific example, look at touching cells, which are cells that are extremely likely to interact with each other because they share um, points of context. Now I would like to revisit the image I have shown at the beginning of our conversation. Using the Phenoptics instruments, we generate a raw immunofluorescent image. We then annotate it with our PhenoChart software, unmix and phenotype with informed machine learning software, and obtain spatial information using PhenoChart, our RStudio add-in for spatial analysis. Now we have studied eight biomarkers, but to do that, we need to know which ones are most valuable. What happens if you're still unsure what would be the best biomarker panel for a certain study? What if we need to explore 30 markers or more? Our codex approach helps you answer exactly that. Here I am showing a 36 antibody breast cancer panel. It allows you to uh, display limitless combinations of markers to study the spatial interaction, find rare phenotypes, and for example, helps you decide on which panels you would like to deploy down the road for routine high throughput analysis. I have shown you our Phenoptics approach before, and now I would like to also introduce the Codex workflow. The Codex system uses a novel approach to image a large number of markers on one piece of tissue. With Codex, you stain your tissue on the bench with your entire antibody panel at once. This limits the amount of hands-on time with the tissue and it reduces the likelihood of mistakes. It also preserves the tissue integrity. After staining, the tissue is imaged. During each cycle, three reporters annealed to their respective antibody barcodes are imaged and dehybridized and eventually washed off. One major advantage of the Codex technology is that it, everything takes place at room temperature directly on the stage of a compatible microscope and you can walk away after you have set up your assay and made sure it has started properly. It is fully automated. Annealing, imaging and dehybridization is repeated as many times it is, as it takes to image every marker included in the antibody panel. For example, for an 18 marker panel, this would mean eight cycles, which consists of six main imaging cycles plus one blank cycle at the beginning and one at the end. So far, we have validated the assay for more than 40 biomarkers at, at one time. Here is an example of a human tonsil section imaged on the codex system. This shows um, just highlighted seven cell types that are that are um, highlighted by their respective markers that you can just see from seven specific markers. You could uncover a lot of more granular subtypes and novel cell types that you might not even know exist in your image using a highly multiplexed panel of 30 or more markers. Where Codex shines is not only the high degree of multiplexing, but it's also the analysis tool that comes bundled with it. It allows you to cluster cells and create Tisney plots, which you can color by biomarker expression or by populations that you have defined based on specific marker expression. Each cell in your codex experiment is stored in an FCS file, which users um, who know how to work with flow cytometry are familiar with. 
This FCS file contains all information about marker expression and intensity, as well as X and Y spatial coordinates. Although the, Tish the Tisney plot here um, is not spatial, each dot within the Tisney plot stands for a single cell, and the underlying cell has all the spatial information and the marker expression embedded within it. With Codex, you can create spatial interaction heat maps based on the negative log odds ratio of how likely two cells are to interact with one another. So red um, rectangles and highly positive numbers would mean cells are very likely to interact with each other and found in proximity to each other very frequently. Blue highlighted rectangles and negative numbers would mean cells are very, very unlikely to interact with each other because they're never found in proximity with each other at all. A recent software update to our Codex Multiplex Analysis Viewer software introduced the possibility to create a circles plot. Circles plots are used to visualize interactions of clustered cells. Um, they start with the strongest interaction first and then um, the color come, becomes more towards blue and the lines become thinner for weaker interactions. The codex system consists of an automated microfluidics instrument that cycles through the imaging cycles, um, as I have mentioned before, and it integrates into the microscope. Pictured in this image is a Kians a microscope, which is our preferred scope to integrate codex with. It has, the codex system has a bench-friendly footprint and you need approximately three feet of bench space for it. As mentioned before, Akoya strives to provide true single cell resolution while always maintaining the spatial context of the tissue. Our codex and phenoptics systems are a perfect complement for each other for biomarker discovery and deployment. Lastly, I would like to close with a snapshot of Akoya Biosciences we have currently over 400 instruments out in the wild at customer sites, and we are part with top academic and biopharma entities. All our solutions are designed to be end-to-end, -end, which means sample to imaging to analysis with a continuum that reaches from reagents, instruments, and software that are designed to work seamlessly with each other. Thank you for taking the time today to attend our Houston user group. And we are happy to answer any questions. Please use the Q&A text box for your questions. Question is the maximum number of markers you have done that have been done before. I, th I believe we have validated the system for approximately 40 um, markers that can be done within one panel. And I think um, there's a recent paper that's uh, showed Gary Nolan was able to do 57, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct. Okay. We have another question. How many slides per stain? Um, I can answer that two ways. So um, for one codex experiment, um, for one panel, regardless of how many antibodies you use up to 40, um, you need only one um, piece of tissue, one slide. 